Welcome to AATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about acute diarrheal disease. We can cover both uh, diarrheal disease in uh, adult and ch child in same session, but uh, some of the fine finer details may be missing. I am telling about general management of uh, uh, acute diarrhea in emergency room. Diarrhea, by definition, it is a passage of stools or watery stools or increased frequency of stools for the child or adult and occurs at some point of uh, time in the life and uh, every child uh, can develop a diarrhea because uh, uh, in children most of the uh, most of the common cause for uh, diarrhea is uh, viral diarrhea so it will spread among spread among the children very fast whereas in adult uh, it can be viral uh, it can be bacterial, it can be foodborne problem, it may not be an infectious at all. So there are a lot of causes for uh, diarrhea in adult, but in children mostly it is due to virus and viral induced diarrhea. So whenever there is diarrhea, we have to see whether it is a long standing diarrhea or short diarrhea. Short diarrhea are always due to infection or acute problems in the food. Sometimes it, we, we call it as food poisoning. Actually, it is not food poisoning. It is a food related diarrhea. Uh, it can be due to toxins produced by bacteria in the food or uh, the oil which we use in uh, food may not be like uh, may not be tolerated by some patients or some patients develop diarrhea due to lactose intolerance that uh, uh, milk induced diarrhea. So, so many uh, uh, types of diarrhea are there. But children, most of the time, it is due to viral diarrhea. You can see here different causes are there for diarrhea. It can be mostly viral di diarrhea, especially in children. Rotavirus, Novavirus, uh, Enteric Adenovirus, uh, Calcivirus, uh, Astrovirus, Enterovirus. Whereas bacteria, Campylobacter jejuni, Salmonella, E. coli, Shigella, Hercinia. Uh, Shiga toxin producing E. coli, Salmonella typhi, Paratyphi, Vibrio cholerae and some protozoa uh, also can produce uh, diarrhea uh, in that uh, Endamoeba histolytica and Giardia lemblica are the most common causes for diarrhea. There are a lot of other causes uh, also there, so we will not be discussing all these things now. The most common cause for acute diarrhea is always viral infection, especially in children. Symptoms of viral infection, it is like any other uh, uh, viral fever, like patient can have URTI like symptoms, patient can have abdominal pain, patient can have loose stools, vomiting, cramps, uh, reduced appetite, headache, muscle aches. Most of the viral fevers can also have diarrhea. So some uh, vi viruses are uh, diarrheogenic, that means they are primarily producing diarrhea and they also have other features. Some viral infections like uh, uh, dengue fever for example, dengue fever main symptoms are high degree fever, back pain, thrombocytopenia, but many patients can come with uh, diarrhea. Uh, hepatitis uh, uh, A patients, hepatitis A patient also many patients can have diarrhea, but primary problem is it's a uh, liver disease, it's a uh, liver injury producing uh, back virus, but these viruses can produce diarrhea also. So, Many viral fevers, diarrhea is a major symptom. Some uh, viral fever, diarrhea is the symptom. So that is the only difference. But uh, one of the common cause for diarrhea, especially in children, it is viral fever. <coughs> now there are different types of bacteria also can produce uh, uh, diarrhea. We have seen the list in the previous slides. Uh, bacterial diarrhea, normally patient can have high degree fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea and many patients with bacterial infection can have blood in stools. So that is a major difference between uh, viral diarrhea and bacterial diarrhea. Most of the children you can see they have only diarrhea, but uh, in adult sometimes there may be slight uh, blood tinged stools or uh, sometimes there will be massive blood in the stools. That all depends on the type of infection and severity of infection. But bloody diarrhea is a classical feature of bacterial infection. Campylobacter jejuni, Shigella, Endamoeba, uh, sorry E. coli, 
non typhoidal salmonella clostridium difficile vibrio parahemolyticus entamoeba by histolytica all these things are infectious conditions which can produce uh, bloody diarrhea but don't think that all infections will produce bloody diarrhea sometimes these patients can have bloody diarrhea if you see blood in stools and if the patient is having high degree fever abdominal pain vomiting then we have to think about an infectious for, cause for diarrhea non infectious cause also can present with acute diarrhea bloody diarrhea and that most important thing is inflammation inflammatory bowel disease ibd anal fissures bleeding hemorrhoids diverticulitis ischemic colitis rectal colonic carcinomas intersusception all these non infectious conditions also can present with acute bloody diarrhea but the most common cause for bloody diarrhea in emergency room is always inflammatory bowel disease and exacerbation of the disease in ibd which was controlled with drugs previously now depending on the area like a small bowel diarrhea colon or small bowel uh, distal diarrhea small bowel distal area diarrhea like that also we can have some differentiation and uh, uh, some uh, clinical finding like non inflammatory small bowel diarrhea watery diarrhea no abdominal pain no wbcs in stool inflammatory diarrhea colon or small bowel uh, dysentery that means blood in stools abdominal pain wbc in stool examination penetrating uh, injuries penetrating infections small bowel diarrhea hendrick fever wbcs in stool examination all these things can be there but if you read about different types of bacteria there will be uh, separate separate clinical finding especially you see vibrio cholera cholera is a special type of diarrhea it is it is known as rice water type diarrhea continuously uh, water will be pouring out from the uh, stomach continuous diarrhea patient will be losing large amount of water and electrolytes whereas in uh, typhoid mild diarrhea especially in salmonella para typhi mild diarrhea with high degree fever typhoid salmonella typhi very minimal diarrhea but patient can have uh, patient can have uh, uh, other problems like uh, fever uh, splenomegaly hepatomegaly like that no non infectious causes of acute diarrhea uh, git causes ibd we have already seen acute diverticulitis pelvic inflammatory disease uh, metabolic causes like diabetic ketosis that is one of the important condition where the patient can have abdominal pain and diarrhea dk so dk is uh, in an uh, high blood sugar with acidosis that many of these patients can have acute diarrhea uremia patient can have diarrhea carcinoid syndrome yeah can, patient can have diarrhea it's a secretory type of diarrhea so it is not an acute diarrhea it takes longer time than other type of uh, diarrhea uh, vip omas all these things you can get diarrhea we are not going to discuss all these things in detail here uh, some drugs like nsaids can produce gastritis and diarrhea uh, antibiotics uh, many antibiotics especially azithromycin amoxicillin all these things can produce diarrhea that is all because uh, azithromycin mechanism is slightly different they increases the peristaltic movement and they they uh, removes the bacteria in normal bacterial flora in the intestine amoxicillin and other penicillins also reduce the normal flora in the intestine that produces diarrhea now rarely parasitic infections also can produce diarrhea so whenever uh, parasitic infection like uh, amebiasis or giardiasis uh, that can have milder symptoms than bacterial diarrhea because bacterial diarrhea patient can have high degree fever intestinal uh, like uh, uh, severe abdominal pain blood in the stools that type of symptoms may not be there in parasitic infection in acute phase they can have diarrhea they can have lot of gas in the abdomen Uh, they can have mild abdominal pain mild fever all these things can be there but clinically it will be very difficult to identify whether it is a bacterial diarrhea or a viral diarrhea or parasitic diarrhea whatever theory we tell it will be very very difficult to diagnose the cause for the diarrhea in emergency room but you can tell whether it is an infectious diarrhea or non infectious diarrhea like especially in ibd and all non infectious diarrhea patient will not have toxicity like uh, in infection that is only difference you can make out otherwise the organism wise it is very difficult you have to examine the stool you have to see the stool polymorphs or lymphocytes 
you have to see the uh, organism in the stool all these things are uh, like very difficult for an bc er but uh, in a primary care setups or secondary care setups it may be uh, like uh, uh, useful because uh, when we get massive diarrhea in a endemic area without knowing what is the cause for diarrhea it will be very difficult to treat the patient so in that type of settings uh, at least uh, better to uh, uh, make out the cause for diarrhea but in a bc emergency room it will be very difficult to diagnose the cause for diarrhea in acute settings but uh, afterwards in ward we can make out what is the cause for diarrhea if we know the cause for diarrhea unnecessarily antibiotic anti uh, parasite drugs can be avoided like a patient who is having diarrhea due to viral illness no need to give antibiotic or uh, metronidazole dinidazole secnidazole like drugs no antibiotic associated diarrhea that is mainly due to the reduction in the normal intestinal flora so whenever we take antibiotic like amoxicillin augmentin or any penicillin group of drugs they removes the intestinal flora normal intestinal flora that can sometimes create uh, diarrhea some drugs act as prokinetic drugs like uh, azithromycin clarithromycin proxithromycin they have a prokinetic type of action so they are, that patient also develop diarrhea now clostridium difficile is a bacteria that produces diarrhea that is also an antibiotic associated diarrhea so antibiotic use can uh, reduce the normal intestinal flora so this uh, clostridium can grow up there that produces diarrhea we have to do a uh, stool examination and blood examination to make out whether this bacteria is present or not then the treatment is we can use uh, uh, vancomycin metronidazole or a newer drug is available fidoxomycin so these are the common drugs available uh, fidoxomycin at present it is not available in india but it is approved by uh, usfda for the treatment of uh, clostridium uh, difficile uh, diarrhea it's a spore forming toxin producing anaerobic bacteria so that can produce diarrhea in prolonged antibiotic use especially patients who are admitted in icu if they develop diarrhea we have to always suspect this problem now in a child whenever the child is admitted with diarrhea we have to always look for the clinical findings so clinical findings are very very important for diarrhea cases because sometimes we get a massive number of cases large number of cases may come from an endemic area so we will not be able to do the investigation for all these patients uh, in a resource limited setting so clinical findings are very very important uh, for patients who is having diarrhea especially in children they may not allow you to take the blood sample you may not get uh, a line so it will be difficult to uh, take blood investigation in all these patients so clinical findings are very important so depending on the clinical findings they are classified into mild moderate severe all these things are depending on the fluid status in the patient's body so we can see the severity of uh, this one pulse you can see it is rapid and weak pulse in severe uh, volume depletion systolic pressure is very low uh, respirations are rapid and deep oral tissues are uh, dry uh, infant uh, infant frontalis uh, markedly sunken eyes are markedly sunken tears are reduced skin cool mottled blue tinged hands and feet urine output is nil that is very, very the most one of the most important clinical finding in severe dehydration due to any cause including diarrhea or vomiting it is the urine output if there is no urine output you have to suspect that there is a complete depletion of water uh, in our body so it can be intravascular or extravascular so water depletion signs are many but in that most important is urine output now some patients may go to coma because severe uh, uh, fluid deficiency can produce electrolyte imbalance they can produce a severe acidosis lactic acidosis all these things are very common you can see here rapid breathing increased uh, heart rate uh, restlessness lethargy poor skin turgor sunken frontalis sunken eyes lack of tears want to drink a lot of water but patient may vomit that is also there 
patient will try to take water but immediately uh, after taking water uh, child may vomit and decreased urine output that is the one of the most important clinical findings both in adult and children child and skin turgor you can see the uh, pin by pinching the skin of the uh, uh, hand you can see it is uh, it takes a longer time to uh, um, relax that skin so it is uh, uh, skin turgor remains elevated so that is very important clinical finding it can be done in both child and adult now once you uh, have a patient with uh, severe diarrhea whether it is a child or adult oral rehydration therapy is the best treatment for all these diarrheas don't give only sugar water sugar water will increase the diarrhea that is a problem of sugar water if you give only water with sugar it is going diarrhea is going to increase again you cannot use only salt also uh, so uh, you have to give either water with salt with some amount of uh, sugar or you can go for ors powder that is the best treatment available because ors is available everywhere it is very cheap what you have to do is you have to take one uh, packet of ors you have to dilute that in uh, whatever water amount is prescribed you have to dilute it in the full uh, amount of water don't put it in part by part completely dilute in a, uh, the prescribed amount of water from that water we have to give uh, to the patient so rehydration uh, solution can be given over 4 hours for mild dehydration if the patient is taking oral some patients may not take oral so you can give a drug like ondansetron or something to prevent vomiting so after half an hour of ondansetron you can give ors no need to give iv for all patients if the patient is not having severe dehydration you can still give ors only problem is vomiting so you have to give sometimes you have to give some drugs to prevent vomiting either oral ondansetron or iv ondansetron can be given so you can give uh, according to the weight you can give like 4 uh, kg weight 200 ml 6 300 8 400 like that we can give so this is a rough calculation depending on the other features like uh, uh, theoretically you may tell uh, 4 kg you give only to 200 ml but patient may have continuous diarrhea continuous vomiting so uh, normal uh, rule is uh, whenever patient is passing large amount of fluid you see the output if possible see the output and see that much amount of water again so suppose the patient is passing 200 ml of stool 200 ml of water has to be given or as has to be given if possible if not possible by mouth uh, that much iv fluid has to be given so ors is the best treatment for all patients who is having severe diarrhea whether it is adult or child ors should be packed should be diluted in the uh, the the amount of uh, water prescribed in the packet let's suppose it is 1 liter in 1 liter we have to dilute and we have to continuously give this fluid to the patient now if the patient want to take food if the patient is having appetite it is better to allow the patient to take uh, food uh, whatever food they want and uh, avoid heavy meals heavy meals non vegetarian during the acute phase uh, combination of complex carbohydrates like rice wheat potatoes bread lean meat yogurt fruits and vegetables uh, can be tried if the patient is able to take uh but try to avoid very uh, heavy uh, very uh, like a very uh, like a n- n- nutritious food like non vegetarian food or uh, other things should be avoided a light food like uh, rice kanji all these things can be given to the patient but uh, better to add salt to the diet because the patient will be losing large amount of uh, you know, water salt uh, other electrolytes from the body now many patients who is having diarrhea especially in children we can give sink syrup sink syrup is uh, it can uh, uh, restore the mucosal barrier integrity and uh, uh, brush border enzyme activity all these things can and it can improve and it can improve the uh, immunity of the intestinal wall so uh, sink supplements are very useful in diarrhea especially in children even adult you can try it 
uh, but it is very useful in children now most of the diarrheas in children are due to viruses we have already uh, discussed but in adult patient they are not due to virus it is mainly due to some um, food borne infections or uh, food borne diarrhea like it it it, it is sometimes called as uh, food poisoning actually it is not food poisoning uh, food we are not able to tolerate that food that is that's all uh, so some oil or some uh, food item which which can create problem in our stomach the patient can develop diarrhea there is not a infectious cause for diarrhea so many diarrheas we no need to treat the patient with antibiotics if you want to give antibiotics uh, rifaximin is one of the best antibiotic because rifaximin is no it's a non absorbable antibiotic it can uh, prevent most of the infection or uh, it or it can treat most of the gram negative infection and including e coli one of the common cause for diarrhea is e coli so rifaximin can be given in travelers diarrhea other drugs like ciprofloxacin 400 mg bd ofloxacin 200 mg bd and children you can give amoxicillin augment in bactrim dso so, so many drugs can be given but many many a times we add metronidazole or tenedazole with ciprofloxacin actually that is not required most of the diarrheas are infectious diarrheas are uh, viral and most of the diarrhea are produced by food not due to the infection which is transmitted through the food it is only the intolerance to the food and even if it is the food born uh, infection patient can have uh, fever uh, abdominal pain some blood in the stools in that type of patients you can give rifaximin if the patient is very sick and you feel that antibiotics are required you can give a, a broad spectrum antibiotic like quinolone uh, ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin are the best uh, uh, quinolones which act below the diaphragm above the diaphragm we use uh, levofloxacin and um, moxifloxacin below the diaphragm it is better to use go for ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin <coughs> and if the patient is having uh, mild diarrhea lot of gas uh, and uh, there is no high degree fever uh, then you can suspect a parasitic infection then you can add metronidazole tenedazole or secondazole the problem with metronidazole and tenedazole it produces severe metallic taste in the stomach in the mouth so many patients already having abdominal pain vomiting tendency that can aggravate uh, if you add metronidazole or tenedazole along with ciprofloxacin unnecessarily so uh, if you feel that the patient is having amoebic or uh, giardiasis amoebic diarrhea or giardiasis we can go for metronidazole or tenedazole or uh, some patients may uh, respond to secnidazole 2 g secnidazole stat tablet can be given so that is also possible <laughs> now once the patient is admitted in emergency room that is a most important part of uh, this diarrhea management you can treat the patient with ors you can treat, give oral fluids you can give antiemetics but many patients may have severe dehydration especially conditions like cholera they have severe dehydration they lose a large amount of intravascular and extravascular volume that is very important uh, many conditions patient will be losing only intravascular volume in diarrhea patient will be losing intravascular and extravascular volume so the ideal fluid for all these things are ringer lactate the most important fluid in diarrhea any type of diarrhea is ringer lactate plasma light is equally effective and it is better than uh, ringer lactate only thing is cost is very high so continuously give fluids because this patient is having intravascular volume depletion extravascular volume depletion when we are giving ringer lactate normal saline and all there will be intravascular correction of fluid some amount may go to the extravascular compartment also once the patient is stabilized then only you can give dextrose containing water you can give dns or 5% dextrose only after correcting the intravascular volume because intravascular volume can be built up by normal saline ringer lactate but intravascular volume will not be increased by 5% dextrose or dns uh, so we have to give uh, ringer lactate or plasmolite initially then go for uh, dns or 5% dextrose afterwards to correct the ex- extravascular compartment normal saline also can be given but normal saline will not contain contain so much electrolytes like ringer lactate or plasmolite so here we know that uh, 
patient is losing large amount of water patient is losing sodium potassium bicarbonate everything is lost so we have to be very careful <coughs> another important drug is uh, how to reduce the uh, volume of diarrhea uh, res res resiclodotil is one drug which can uh, which can be used to reduce the volume of diarrhea in patients with uh, either infectious or non infectious uh, diarrhea it reduces the volume of the drug lopramide lomotil these are the two drugs they reduce the motility of the stomach in acute infectious diarrhea try to avoid this drug in acute cases once the fever is subsided if the uh, patient is better then you can try, try lomotil or lopramide otherwise uh, in acute phase acute infectious phase if you give lopramide and lomotil there is a chance for toxic megacolon so try to avoid this in acute phase uh, once you treat the patient with antibiotic you can give resiclodotil then you can try this uh, lopramide or lomotil otherwise uh, it is not uh, advisable to use uh, lopramide or lomotil in acute diarrhea so we have discussed about one of the important problem in emergency room that is acute diarrheal disease uh, we mainly focused on uh, child part but uh, almost the clinical findings and uh, outcomes are same in children and adult only thing is the causes are entirely different the cause in children are mainly due to uh, viruses and it can produce endemic problems in uh, some areas so massive number of patients may come in, uh, to the emergency room sometime adult it can be due to uh, uh, infectious that is mainly bacterial infection and it can be due to non infectious condition so Uh, adult we may need to extensively investigate the case uh, to get the uh, to get the um, cause for the diarrhea but uh, infectious diarrhea normally come with uh, fever but whereas non infectious diarrhea normally will not have fever and one important thing is use of lomotil lopramide try to avoid lomotil and lopramide in infectious diarrhea in acute phase so acute phase will be uh, like one or two days patient like acute phase like patient fever may subside abdominal pain may subside there will not be blood in stools and only mild diarrhea is there. during that period you can try lopramide or lopramide the only thing is lopramide and lopramide uh, once you give the patient may develop severe constipation one or two days patient can have constipation and that may be the only side effect but acute condition if you give lopramide or lopramide very rarely patient can go to toxic megacolon so we have to be very careful <coughs> and sink su sink suspension is a very very important treatment for children and it can be also tried in uh, adult when we are giving iv fluids ringer lactate is one of the best treatment for uh, uh, fluid resuscitation in diarrhea if the patient is admitted to emergency room if the patient is discharged oral rehydration solution ors solution has to be given to the patient because that itself can relieve the symptoms of diarrhea many patients with the gastroenteritis that means they have on both vomiting and diarrhea if we give uh, drugs like uh, ondansetron the vomiting part will be controlled and we can easily treat the patient with oral fluids or oral uh, uh, oral medication and remember if the patient want to eat let them eat if the patient is not having appetite don't try to don't force them to eat especially children if you force them to eat again vomiting abdominal pain abdominal cramps uh, all these things can occur so try to avoid forceful uh, eating in any patient thank you